Well, it's just another manic Monday here. Uh, it's not a hard task I have to do today, but I have to take off basically all the brakes on the front of this thing. I'm going to have to have the rotors turn, got to go get two brand new calipers, new pads, and, you know, put everything back together. Oh, and hoses, so all that's about to get new. Uh, we are looking for a slight vibration. Now, we thought it was the motor mounts because they were toast. wasn't them. Uh, this brake caliper locked up when I went home on Monday. Or not Monday, on uh, Friday. He took me home in this after we got done doing the motor mounts. And that baby right there locked up. So, yeah, fun on a bun. But do that and then later we got to change the drive shaft out we're going to go from a two-piece with the carrier bearing in the center i don't know if you can see the carrier or not yeah carrier's right there but that's probably going to be getting a one-piece drive shaft also and i'm probably going to have to jack it up and do these rear brakes too those are shoes they suck but they're not too hard to do First things first, let's uh, jack it up because I can't use the lift because it don't have any way to lift it once it's up in the air, unfortunately. So jack it up, pull both tires, pull everything off and take it to the shop to have it turned. Fun, fun. So a mere 30 minutes later, both sides are disassembled. Disassemble. No disassemble. But uh, they're ready. We're uh, here to load them up. Take them. Again, we're getting new hoses, new calipers, new pads, and the rotors are being turned. So this side looks perfect because we just did it. Perfect. With a K. The other side is... I'm probably going to get new bearings and seal for that because it don't look good. Regrease them, repack them, blah, blah, blah. But yeah. Oh, the other side's not as good as this side is because we just redid it. So those are new rotors, but where we put the bearings in, we didn't clean it. Or should I say he didn't clean it? So you can actually see the shiny right in the center where the pads have been running. So I need to get some brake clean, then bearings, grease up at the garage, rotors turned, pads caliper hoses yeah all new brake system so a short time later now here but i've been doing running new caliper pads new brake hose uh rotors have been turned this ha this side has new bearings in it. we did the other side like two weeks ago so this is done now sorry i'm burping here uh Getting ready to put the wheel back on, tighten her up, put her down, lift it up on the actual lift because I got a jack under it right now. And I got to pull the drive shaft out of it. And we're going to check all the U joints because, again, we're looking, we're chasing a uh, shutter. It's, it's very slight. We hope it's not the torque converter or something. Uh, but I think we're getting ready to change. To a one-piece drive shaft and maybe even change the rear trans mount but it is what it is we'll find it eventually but you know it depends on how much we have in it by the time we're done to where it's even worth it so it's what you just got to do so we're going to do away with the two-piece drive shaft and the carrier bearing we don't see anything wrong with it but you never know they could be at the end of their tolerance on both shafts and that could be creating a wobble. Who really cares about a half shaft anyway? But here in Kentucky, this is how we uh, change a drive shaft or get a drive shaft. Yeah. So this is our one piece aluminum drive shaft under there. But I need to pull off the harmonic balancer first. So I got to let it back down. Then we'll put it back up, get the drive shaft off.
Well, right now I've changed the harmonic balancer, did the entire front brakes. Uh, we're putting the drive shafts back in. We've dropped the center support down because maybe it was at too harsh of an angle. Harsh of an angle, not harsh. Harsh of an angle, but we broke one of the clips, if you can see it on the ground there, that keep the U-joint in its position. So he went back up the hill to try to check that. We've also done new injectors because it had a stumble and we actually got a bunch of black garbage out of it, but it's all back together now. Harmonic balancer, uh, pulley, everything back on injectors are changed i mean right there's the crap on that shipping label but six new injectors um yeah yeah so at this point it's gonna be uh either this that stuff's fixed it or the drive shaft angles fixed it or we're gonna have to have a solid drive shaft and put new yoke and everything on it and hopefully that'll fix it. But for now, waiting to see if we got clips. If we don't, we're done for today. If we do, we're gonna get them in and test drive it. See if the vibration is gone after I bleed them front brakes. So check it out. This is what I like about my new job here is, uh, well, of course you saw the 53 International, 52, whatever it is. We had that on here this morning. And we finally think we found a problem. Later on, we'll probably get a new drive shaft for it if you don't sell it. But we changed the U-joint and basically knocked the whole vibration out. So, oh yeah, that's done. And now we got a brand new Equinox on here. Somebody wanted a hitch put on it for, you know, when they buy it. Or they've already bought it and wanted a hitch put on it, shall I say. Did that. Done. So, now that's off but that's what i like i don't want a boring same thing over and over and over again you know like if you look at an oil change shop and all you do is change oil man you're gonna hate that job after a while it's gonna get so boring but where i work rebuilds these are like new condition this one's got twenty three thousand miles on it it's like new and I actually love this color. It's definitely like a black cherry. It don't come through very good on the camera, but it's it's real nice. Anywho, just knocked out this one. So we'll see what else. If they want an oil change, I'll change the oil, get this thing out of here. And we'll get the other one up on here and change its oil. And we'll move on to the next stuff. And you see, just like that, we got a Buick now. These are really, really nice Buicks right here. This is the fully loaded one. I mean loaded. Steering wheel warmer. I think even I asked it. This has a ball chiller in it for us fellows out there. Keep the nads nice and cool, you know. But this thing's wicked nice. I drove it. Not this one, another one, but man, they're nice. And now it's a Ram Bighorn Edition. It changes quick around here. Uh, we've got to put a back bumper on this. But, yeah, this thing's wicked nice. Foldable mirrors. Let me tell you something about that Buick. When you back up, it shows an aerial view of the car. Like all four corners, everything around it. Other cars and everything. I was tripping. I don't know how it does it. I'm going to find out, though.
currently headed to Richmond, Indiana to drop off the Studebaker. This is the you know, blue-green one uh, with the Camaro Trans Am whatever underneath it. A small block and uh, yeah, somebody's bought it so we're delivering it. And it's like 6.15 in the morning. It's been a while since I've been up this early but yeah. Let's get this baby going and truck on up there and get back. Anyway, we're currently stopped at a uh, at Billy's One Stop, which is our local, you know, everybody comes here in the morning and gets some breakfast. So let's start trucking. Well, we found the body. This is a uh, 68 Dodge Slep line. This is going on top of the RT360 Dakota. So, yeah. Short wheelbase. It's going to be pretty mean. That Dakota's pretty mean right now, so. It's got a fair amount of patina. Got a little bit of rust in some spots, too, of course, but that's, you know, how it is. Tailgate right there is pretty rusty. But all in all good. A little bit down here. Nothing special. You know, it's just the way these trucks were. Uh, we have to get this piece of chrome. We already found it. It's on a parts truck. We will have to put rockers in it. But, yeah. This is what's going on the RT Dakota. So, we definitely know there's one thing wrong with this car. I'm going to kill these dogs. Uh, it's tuned down a lot. And we believe the reason it was tuned down uh, so much, like as in timing, is because where the motor mount was bad, it was sort of flipping out of there. So, it couldn't have all the power it needed. So, that's what I'm going to work on today. I also need to put front shocks on it today and maybe even a idler arm and drag link. This specific front suspension, which I found out was an S10, does not have a Pitman arm with a bushing in it. So that's cool. It's a little cheaper, but we're going to start with trying to tune it up, trying to get it to run a little bit stronger, which it's pretty good now. Uh, and also, yeah, I still got to figure out why this thing is death, you know, hopping, wobbling, whatever. It could just be them shocks. So, replace shocks first. Uh, test drive it. If it still does it, we'll go on to trying to find the steering problem, which I haven't found yet. But anyway, this thing's done been upgraded, HEI and everything like that. It does have a manual choke, which I want to get rid of, but it's a hundred bucks for a conversion. This bolt right here, if you can see where that's pointing, there's a screw right there, and it's leaking. I don't understand how we've tightened it up, but it still does just ever so slightly. But I'd like to also degrease this and power wash it someday soon, too. To keep it looking even better. But for today... We're going to adjust timing. I don't use the timing light. We do it by ear. We haven't seen it have a problem with it. So that's what we're going to do. Also, the new fuel pump is like seriously providing more fuel and everything than the other one was. So that was also hurting the performance of our carburetor. It actually needs adjusted quite a bit too. So that's what I'm going to work on. So I believe I got it advanced enough now. It's actually just on, just on the edge of where it's a little hard to start. But, I'll show you something that I did find, which is really going to help me. Uh, and that is the kick down for the Turbo 350. This thing feels gutless, okay? And I can't figure out why, but I think I just did. So, TH350. So, when you go full throttle... This should be pulling full. 
it should be maxed out okay so probably gonna flood it here but go full throttle it's not even pushing the uh kick down so uh this bracket which i think somebody had made is not gonna work for what i need i'm gonna have to take it off and i'm probably gonna have to cut off some of it but i still need the top part to work the throttle which it needs to come in anyway but this should actually be like way back here and what i had is i had that old 267 uh v8 over there on that frame you can't see it maybe you can see it no uh it had the right bracket this is the right bracket it's gonna pull it back to the point where when i throttle it it'll actually kick down and go way to go so gotta do a little bit of modifying here real quick this bracket's fine i'm gonna leave it alone i'm not worried about it so i'm gonna put it on there however this one definitely needs something done to it this kind of needs to go in it needs to come to be straight here on the throttle and it's not yeah so we're about to do some stuff let's get busy all right so it's tuned a little better we're going to tune this carburetor some more but none of the brackets i had for the throttle was working so i went and got this aftermarket uh mr gasket unit it's 21 bucks under my account so I said yep uh put a spring on it to make sure this goes back but it's full engaged now on the other carburetor it wasn't even moving so yeah absolutely no kick down on here before so it should feel a ton better uh but yeah we're gonna tune carburetor now and at that point it'll be time to try to do some shocks which i already have and i'm gonna put capri shocks on the front because this might be an s10 front end which means it's a little soft for a v8 you know you always got to sort of up the suspension a little bit so yeah we're gonna have some fun now uh yeah but new throttle setup new kick down setup all that junk's gone now we tune carburetor so we have the timing all figured out now the new brackets working flawlessly um i'm not sure if my kick downs unhooked in my transmission you know that little s clip but it's still not kicking down and sometimes it returns and sometimes it don't so i got a spring on it which leads me to believe it's probably not connected down on the transmission so that's going to be fun to fix uh but now i'm going to jack her up and put shocks on which ain't going to be fun because I don't have a compressor right now. I'm still not even messing with it. I said screw that thing. But I uh, have to break the wheels free, jack it up. Start Change it. Up. it. Not yet. Are you talking, to talking to YouTube. <laughs> I was talking to him anyway. It's 